My name is Nina Faust, and I am going to be reading a selection from the National Geographic website on porcupines. The porcupine is the prickliest of rodents, though its Latin name means quill pig. There are about two dozen porcupine species, and all boast a coat of needle-like quills to give predators a sharp reminder that this is no easy meal. Some quills, like those of Africa's crested porcupine, are nearly 30 centimeters long. Porcupines have really soft hair, but on their back, sides, and tail, it is usually mixed with sharp quills. These quills typically lie flat until a porcupine is threatened and then leap to attention as a persuasive deterrent. Porcupines cannot shoot them at predators as once thought, but the quills do detach easily when touched. Many animals come away from a porcupine encounter with quills protruding from their snouts or bodies. Quills have sharp tips and overlapping scales or barbs that make them difficult to remove once they're stuck in an animal's skin. Porcupines grow new quills to replace the ones they lose. Porcupines found in North and South America are good climbers and spend much of their time in trees. Some even have prehensile gripping tails to aid in climbing. The North American porcupine is the only species that lives in the U.S. and Canada and is the largest of all porcupines. A single animal may have 30,000 or more quills North American park porcupines use their large front teeth to satisfy a healthy appetite for wood. They eat natural bark and stems and have been known to invade campgrounds and chew on canoe paddles. North American porcupines also eat fruit, leaves, and springtime buds. Other porcupine species live in Africa, Europe, and Asia. These animals usually live on the ground and can inhabit deserts and grasslands and forests. Female porcupines have between one and four young, depending on the species. Babies have soft quills at birth, which harden within a few days. Most young porcupines are ready to live on their own at about two months of age. A baby porcupine is named a porcupet. And now, for a couple of Alaskan porcupine stories from my own experiences. I love to walk my alpacas in the fields around my house. Sometimes when Gypsy, Canela, and I are walking in the lower field, a little tiny black dot will be visible way in the distance. Both alpacas will stop and stare, and sometimes I don't see anything. Then, Canela will sound off with his alarm call. E -e 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 -e. Then I get worried and think that he might be smelling a bear. I look intently and then I spot the little tiny dot way over there. And I say, oh Canela, it's just a porcupine. Come on. Surprisingly, Canela and Gypsy then want to just walk right over to see. But, since my alpacas are sometimes not on a lead, but roaming free, I do not let them near the porcupine and simply say, let's go the other way, boys. Another time, I came out of my house because I had heard both my alpacas giving an alarm call. They were pretty frantic. I went over to the pen to see what all the fuss was about. And they were just standing near the front of the barn, and I thought, well, What's up? What's up? I got there just in time to see a small porcupine waddle right inside their barn. I called my husband, Ed, to please grab the broom and chase the porcupine out of the barn while I made sure the two alpacas stayed back from the barn to give the porky room to get out of the barn, squeeze through the fence, and get on its way. So, all ended well. And this is Nina, your Alaska naturalist, saying, there's one for the big B.